everyone. Welcome back to Talk with Naya. So let's get right into it. Tamika Scott from the group Escape pulled out the receipts on her latest YouTube video where she shared the paperwork that showed her sister Latasha Scott did steal her royalty checks from her by changing her address okay we talked about the situation with the group escape and how they're on the bravo tv show called the queens of r&b with the other r&b group swv now tamika also got tiny's mom to share more details about how they found out about the stolen checks and then tamika shared that she got a threatening text message that said her sex tape from way back in the day would be exposed if she didn't stop sharing this narrative and she put it together that the text came from her sister and her sister's husband, Rocky. Listen to this. The is online saying that I'm lying. She did a video saying, oh, you know how she lied because I said the things that I said about Candy to protect her. She was calling me crying in the phone, talking about a book Jermaine wrote, crying, saying Candy said she broke up the group. So I went to defend my sister and I said a whole bunch of things about Candy. And I apologized. All right. So now she wants to hold that over my head and say that I'm lying about the money that was stolen from me, my royalties that were stolen from me. And she wanted an apology. So now I guess I'll just wait on my apology. Let me tell you something. She's not going to get an apology. And after I finish revealing what I'm about to reveal, I don't want an apology from her because I'm not vain like that. A lot of stuff has happened over the years where I have protected my sister and her husband because I wanted a family. I didn't want to be an outcast. I didn't want them not to love me anymore. So I took a lot of things, not just off of them, but also off my mom. So I did not. My sister is online saying that I'm lying. She did a video saying, oh, you know how she lied because I said the things that I said about Candy to protect her. She was calling me crying in the phone, talking about a book Jermaine wrote, crying, saying Candy said she broke up the group. So I went to defend my sister and I said a whole bunch of things about Candy. And I apologized. All right. So now she wants to hold that over my head and say that I'm lying about the money that was stolen from me, my royalties that were stolen from me. And she wanted an apology. So now I guess I'll just wait on my apology. Let me tell you something. She's not going to get an apology. And after I finish revealing what I'm about to reveal, I don't want an apology from her because I'm not vain like that. A lot of stuff has happened over the years where I have protected my sister and her husband because I wanted a family. I didn't want to be an outcast. I didn't want them not to love me anymore. So I took a lot of things, not just off of them, but also off my mom. So I did not want to be out here without love. So of course I let things ride, but to have that thrown back in my face, my loyalty to my family, and for you to say that I'm a liar when y'all are around here trying to extort me and you sit here threatening me, saying that I need to apologize and say I made a mistake. No, I didn't make no mistake. Miss Diane already explained to everybody that she signed all of us up for sound exchange. Well, I signed Escape, every one of them, up for Sound Exchange. And um, I, I sent all the paperwork. And Tamika, I, I, I did Latasha, everybody. And Tamika told me, when, she, when we filled out the paperwork, her, she was living in New York then. Mm -hmm. and, and I still have the paperwork. And I filled it out and I put it, her address was all in New York and everything. Mm -hmm. Tamika, my, my Tamika had gotten her checks and it was a pretty big check then. I'm thinking it was like close to $20,000 the first time. They got a lot of checks though. And Tamika said, I didn't get my checks. And I said, well, you should have. I said, cause Tamika's gotten several checks already. And so we called up to Sound Exchange. Me and Tamika was on the line and we talked to, this guy's name was Joe Mo Grady. I think he's passed away, but back then, he was the person we talked to and he talked to Tamika and she asked him questions about her checks and he told her that her checks were going to Hampton, Georgia. And so after that, she said, well, I live in New York. How did this happen? And he sent her copies of the checks. Mm -hmm. 
And yep. he, yeah, he, so said, just, he said copies. He said something about your sister and Rocky. Mm -hmm. Or Edward Bivens, because I really didn't know Rocky's name. Right, he said Edward, Edward Bivens, Bivens cash your checks. But how was I supposed to get my money back? The only way you could get your money back is you had to prosecute him. And you said, I don't want to do that. Once we did do the investigation, well, they did. They sent information. Someone sent in, which was my sister, and I will be put showing that in a second. She changed the contract and put um, her name on the contract saying that she was my manager. And I, you're going to see that in a second. And then they put my, uh, they sent my passport. That was a lot of I stuff. I know he said, you know, that they that they had proof. They thought it was you and everything. And but there's only reason that that you couldn't get your money back is you would have to prosecute them. No one has a reason to lie. And you're going to see with the receipts. And if it wasn't for Miss Diane, none of us, me, Candy. My sister, Tiny, nobody would have gotten these checks from Sound Exchange. If it wasn't for you finding out about that royalty, was we, it, my husband with the TAMS, I signed them up and I, that's how I found out about it. And our business managers in New York told me about it. So that's kind of how I knew about Sound, Sound Exchange. Thank you for, for doing that because we've all, we're still getting checks today. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Get them checks. So it is getting quite messy over there. And basically, the escape group is now a trio, and Latasha Scott is looking horrible in these streets. Now, let's move on. Alicia Keys and Little Mama are spotted hugging it out. Social media will never let go of the time Little Mama got on stage with Alicia Keys and Jay Z and basically interrupted their performance. And people are still asking Alicia Keys about this until this day. So, what do y'all think about them hugging it out? It was nice to see. Now, did you guys catch Lotto's radio show? It came out today. What did you think about it? I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, but it looks like there's a clip out there and they spoke about the rumors of Chloe Bailey messing around with Quavo. And Chloe shut down those rumors. Listen to this. It was that, that you was talking to Quavo. Uh-oh. Well, we doing a movie together. But they were saying that John was hanging out. Uh-oh. Hmm. Well. Who said that? I don't know. Why the hell would you say that? I don't know where that came from. Hello? Yeah, working. Yes. Flirting, working. Working. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's nice. I mean, now I also wanted to say congratulations to Coco Jones. She received her first Billboard Hot 100 charting single with her song, I See You. She went to social media and said, y'all words can't express what this means to me. If y'all been rocking with me from day one, you know all the highs and lows I've been through to get to this point. Trust when I say this is just the beginning. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting me. Let's keep running it up. So definitely keep listening to I See You. All right, now it looks like new music is coming from Juicy J and he's collaborating with Sly Maroney, K. Carvin, and Aleza on a new song. So I can't wait to hear this. And I love when I see that these girls put out new music. So I can't wait to hear it. Now let's talk about how people are feeling towards the rap girls moving over to a pop sound. A TikTok creator shared her feelings about how some rap girls move over to a pop sound way too quickly in their careers. Listen to this. Hey y'all, let's talk about the rap girls going pop too fast. I've been on y'all this video for a long time because y'all know I mention it all the time and it gets on my nerves. Now, first of all, I just want to say I know not only do the rap girls do it, I know that all rappers do it. Here's my issue, the rap girls do it too quick. So, let's talk about it. Now, we got to back up a little bit and talk about the queen on Nika Tanya Mirage, okay? Because I actually do like to call this Nicki Minaj fact. Nicki Minaj is not only the best-selling female rapper of all time, she's one of the best-selling rappers of all times and one of the best-selling artists, period, of all time. And she did that playing a pop game, period. Bang, bang, pound the alarm, super bass, starships, y'all know the bops. So now all the rap girlies, all the execs, they like, oh, we got to sign the rap girls and hurry up and get them a pop single if we want to get to the big bag. Now, I'm not mad at this. <laughs> I love a bag. However, if you do it too quickly, one of the things you run the risk of doing is not letting an artist develop the sound and the audience that loves that sound. Now, there are some girls and girls, like let's say Doja Cat, Lil Nas X, who you can kind of always still have had their eyes set on something a little more genre agnostic, right? But that was always consistent. You could tell that with them, right? We ain't talking about them. We talking about the girls who give us hood bops, get signed, and then immediately go chase the pop bag. I think some good case studies to look at this might be to look at Santana's recent crossover, um, maybe even Sweetie. Oh, and I hate to say this, I would even maybe look at my good sis Meg. 
First of all, the impact of a pop moment does not hit as hard when you have not already established yourself in your original genre. Second of all, you run the risk of setting yourself up to always be chasing some other sound and then never building like a solidified, unified audience. And when it comes to hip hop, a genre rooted in, that's important. As a trap feminist, I can say for the rap girlies, it's really important. We just cannot overlook the fact that artists who make music from a certain perspective and from a certain culture are immediately being asked to make something else if they want to be successful. You feel me? Even last year when JT interviewed her for ID Magazine and was saying like there was a big heartbreak moment when you went your super bass era, you know, Nikki said like, I had never heard that articulated and now I understand the heartbreak and the disconnect. So everybody can acknowledge and be on the same page that there is a little bit of disconnect that gets created when you go from making the hood music to pop music. That just is what it is. If there's a right way to do it. I don't think a lot of these labels are setting the girlies up to do it the right way, but I am very curious to hear what y'all think. If y'all like having conversations like this, listen to my podcast, Purse First, the only one exclusively about the rap girls. So what artists come to mind to you guys after hearing this clip? And what do you think about this topic? Because I thought it was interesting. Now, lastly, let's talk about Beyonce. Now, we spoke on Beyonce's Ivy Park line being released from Adidas, and Beyonce released a couture line which was inspired by her Renaissance album. Now, a TikTok creator shared that Beyonce didn't make the best move with this. Listen to this. Proof. This is proof of two, two big things. Big thing number one. Beyonce and Jay-Z control the media. Big thing number two, Beyonce doesn't know what her fans want. All right, so let's talk about big point number one. Beyonce and Jay-Z control the media. We heard just yesterday, mm -hmm, just yesterday that Adidas and Beyonce split ways for creative differences. She was let go because they weren't making any money off of it. And that's after having lost so much money cutting ties with Kanye, right? It's obvious the Yeezys were keeping hers afloat. Don't want to get into that too much, right? But then she drops this like 12 hours later. It's not even suspicious because suspicious means you didn't see it coming. I feel like she's been dropped from Adidas from when we first heard about it. If you go check one of my old videos out, I've been talked about this. She's been dropped, but because they control the media, that gave her time to get all of this set up with Balenciaga. So by the time that it was announced, she already had something coming. There's no way she made this collection in 12 hours. Although it looks sick. And that brings me to point number two. She doesn't know what her fans want. Ivy Park was already very, very expensive. And I mean, I, I have two Ivy, three Ivy Park things. It doesn't matter. It's not something that was easily acquired. You went from having things that are already hard to get to something that is going to be impossible. People couldn't even get Renaissance tickets for a good price. And now you want them to spend their yearly salary on this. Like when we, it's like you're listening, you're hearing, but you, you, you heard, but you ain't heard. Like what, first of all, this collection, honestly, I don't know if it's a joke or not. I understand that couture is, you know, but who's supposed to wear this? And let's say I could afford it. Where am I going wearing this? Or is it only people that can afford this would wear this and have places to go with it? My thing is, I, this was, it wasn't that it was suspicious. My thing is, if Beyonce knows what she's doing, then why is she still doing it wrong? Now, fans did say that this is a couture line and this is not a collection for fans, you know, to go out and grab. And it's meant to be an expression of art. But how do you feel about Beyonce's moves in retail spaces? I mean, if you've been subscribed to the channel, been rocking with me, you know this topic has come up before. So how do you feel about her moves in the retail space? Let me know. And that is all I have for today. Bye.